Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Let's have a real English conversation. Today I have something super special to share with you. I'm going to share with you a real conversation that I had with a local yoga instructor here in my city. She also teaches yoga on YouTube, so you can check out the link to her channel in the description. Here you're going to meet Gail. Gail teaches yoga and she talks about her journey getting into yoga and just what it means to her life. I'm sure you also have hobbies and passions and interests, so it's a good way to hear how she talks about it and to try to imitate that style of speaking because we all want to talk about our passions and share them with other people. Throughout the conversation, you're going to see little subtitles pop up. These are for vocabulary expressions, phrasal verbs, and also some special pronunciation. After the conversation with Gail, you're going to also have a vocabulary lesson today. Wow! You're going to see my husband Dan and I explain these vocabulary expressions in detail. This is a really great way to ingrain them in your memory, and I know a lot of you have difficulties remembering words after you've learned them. So hearing them in the conversation with Gail is a good first step, but it's also great to hear us talk about it later, give examples, make it more vivid in your mind. So you're going to watch that vocabulary lesson and then you're going to watch a phrasal verb lesson. This grammar lesson is super helpful for helping you sound like a native speaker because we use phrasal verbs all the time. And finally, we're going to practice some in-depth pronunciation so that you can speak exactly the way that Gail and I did in our conversation. Are you ready to hear a real English conversation? If you enjoy this lesson today, I hope that you can join the Fearless Fluency Club, which is my monthly course. You'll get information and lessons like this every month. This is just a short clip from it, about half of the material, or actually less than half, maybe a third of the material, but you'll get an even longer lesson set every month when you join the course. All right, let's meet Gail and learn real English. Hi everyone, I'm here today with Gail, Hi. and we're going to talk about yoga and all of your experience with that and really anything that comes up along the way. Sounds great. Yeah, so <laughs> can we start at the very beginning? When did you first start with yoga? And then we'll go on to what's happening now. Well, that's interesting. I was living in New York City at the time, pursuing a career as a professional freelance photographer. Oh, quite different from yoga. <laughs> yeah, although, you know, everything kind of, it's a lot about your vision and being mindful and mm. exploring. And so, so they kind of weave together in some ways. I can see that. But anyway, uh, I just dabbled in it. And one thing that I always remember, I think one of the funniest things is, in one of my my first class when the teacher said oh, pay attention to your breath like focus on your breath and I thought that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard like I'm here to move and do some cool poses like why would I think about my breath I'm breathing you know? everyone's like, breathing right <laughs> right right so let's get to the good stuff you know and then as I progressed in my yoga I just realized like the breath is everything the breath is so key uh -huh. and so now I focus on that or I try to focus on that more than anything. Yeah. And it's really a powerful healing mechanism. And yeah, we do it all the time and it's mm. part of our sympathetic nervous system. So we'll breathe. I mean, if we tried to stop breathing, we'd pass out and then we'd breathe again. <laughs> so, yeah, your body wants to breathe. <laughs> right. So, um, but still there's ways of like breathing more fully, breathing more mindfully that can, you know, help your overall health. And mm, that's funny though. At the beginning you thought, what is she talking about? <laughs> I thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> wow, yeah, especially if you've never heard that kind of phrasing before. Yeah. It's like, everyone breathes. I yeah. don't even think about breathing. <laughs> right, exactly. But I feel like for me, whenever they talk about breathing in yoga class, mm -hmm. I realize, oh, I have been breathing all this time, all day, and haven't been thinking about it. And then when you start to think about it, maybe it's just that physical element, but I kind of it clears my mind a little bit like mm -hmm. once you focus on breathing it's not hypnotic but I almost feel like I'm in the zone or it's like when you're thinking about your breath you can focus more on what's going on at least for me no that's totally it and here's the thing yoga is about union and the union of opposites complementing each other mm. so the breath is composed of two opposites right the inhale and the exhale and it's kind of got an ebb and flow so mm -hmm. like if you sit by the ocean or by a waterfall and you have that kind of constant repeating noise mm -hmm. it really relaxes you so when you turn into your breath it's kind of the same thing mm. and a lot of times when you pay attention to your breath you might realize that your inhale is stronger than your exhale and what we're really trying to do is balance the breath because the inhale is more energetic 
and the exhale is more relaxing and soothing. Mm. So if you're like feeling stressed out or anything like that, if you just take a moment, focus on the breath and really letting that exhale draw out, it's amazing how much it can calm you. So mm. you're like totally right on there. <laughs> this seems like a simple thing, but it could do a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious what happened after that first yoga class. You thought, what in the world are you talking about? Breath, okay. Did you just go in full force after that or was there just a slow progression because you've been doing yoga for a long time a long time <laughs> it was like um i dabbled mm -hmm. you know when i was in new york city i dabbled like sometimes i would go to class but i never completely committed mm -hmm. like i did later on uh -huh. so i dabbled in new york and then i moved from new york to bryson city north carolina and got into whitewater paddling uh -huh. and so occasionally i knew how to do sun salutations and occasionally i would do some yoga occasionally i would i was teaching kayaking at that mm. point also whitewater kayaking so occasionally i'd lead people through a little bit of yoga but not that often but then when i left bryson city and moved to Asheville, that's when i really committed and i mm. found a class i liked and it was just like tuesday night that's what i was doing yoga and I did that class religiously for two years. Oh, that's dedication. Yeah. Same and then, <laughs> then the yoga teacher started offering yoga teacher trainings. Oh. And so I thought, oh, I'll do that. You know, like, I don't know if I want to teach, but, you know, I'll just, why not? I wanted to learn more. Mm -hmm. So, and so that helped to grow up more. So I got to the point where instead of like waiting for what the teacher was going to say, like I could do my own poses. Oh, you had that confidence to just branch out yourself and so then after that I stopped going to yoga classes because I'm like I want to breathe how I want to breathe and I want to take as long in a pose as I want to take and not mm -hmm. just be dictated to all the time and and I learned a lot of poses I understood them more so I started more of my own practice but then <laughs> unfortunately I got this tech job where I was sitting at a desk and I was sitting and sitting and sitting and I had never Ugh. sat so much in my whole life. It takes a toll on you. <laughs> oh, I, I knew it was, but I just thought, you know, I got to do this. Oh, sure. But it did take a toll on me. And actually, I had a habit, which I wasn't even aware of, but I would lean on my left elbow, put my chin and stare at the screen and then, you know, use the mouse here. So. And I, meanwhile, had kind of lapsed in my yoga, hadn't mm -hmm. really done yoga in a while, like a while. <laughs> and then I went to a yoga class and I couldn't reach my arms, went lying down to the floor and I couldn't do dolphin pose. And I was like, what's up with my shoulder? It was my left shoulder had lost all this range of motion from doing this. Think, oh. think sitting like that for hours at a time. And that can make a big difference. Yeah. It's just an unconscious movement that you were making. Right. And because I thought, what happened? I didn't fall on my shoulder. Like, why would it be like this? And as soon as I, I thought, I'll observe myself, which is one of the things that yoga teaches you also mm -hmm. is to observe yourself and to get to know yourself better, even though you think, well, of course I know myself. I'm myself. You know, yeah, but I know I'm like, breathing all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, as soon as I saw that, I knew that's what it was because I was rounding forward, stretching this, weakening this. And so it took me like a year to rehab but it was yoga that kind of showed me and that's what yoga will do it'll show you your limitations it can show mm. you where you're injured it can show you like you know the good stuff and the bad stuff mm. <laughs> essentially and then it's up to you to pay more attention to deal with it and yeah. to not be not like get too wound up in self-criticism mm. you know because you realize like well i'm not very strong or i'm really limited my hands patient you know. with yourself too <laughs> yeah exactly so that was like a whole journey and then i decided to teach yoga oh. <laughs> and so that's another I, level yeah then i really got into it and i started off teaching at businesses around Asheville. did that for a while so until the businesses would just hire a yoga teacher to come in and like teach their employees yeah i mean that's amazing. all businesses should do that see if any yes. guys <laughs> bring yoga to your business um, that's a great idea yeah so i had a couple places like volvo and liberty bikes and um, you know, a couple other offices that would bring me in and some, a lot of times the company would pay, sometimes the people would pay. Mm -hmm. So that was good, but um, then that kind of dried up a little bit. And so then I got into teaching more public classes and mm. teaching privates. And that's what I really like is teaching privates because mm -hmm. it's one-on-one, -on -one, I can focus on that person and what they need. And it's interesting in a class, people are trying to cue to the, you know, the common issue but there's other people that are going to get ignored and if they don't understand like how to pay attention to their body the cues might not even be the best cues for them 
Like so what the teacher is suggesting might yes. not be for them. Mm -hmm. And as I've gone through the years, it's like things that I thought or was taught years ago, I'm questioning now. Oh. And I'm realizing that things are changing and are like, you know, 20 years ago, people didn't think fascia was important. Like when they would cut up a cadaver, it's just like, yeah, this is the wrapping paper out of the way, you know? And now it's like we realize that fascia is this big connected network mm. that connects everything in our body. And so even though our muscles have points of origin and insertion, really the whole muscles connected via the fascia mm. to all, like our whole body. So if I like pulled on my shirt, you know, this whole, there's going to be a whole thread that's going to feel that tug. Yeah, it's all connected in some way. <laughs> yeah, and that brings us back to yoga. It's about mm -hmm. connection. So in a way, the last pose that you almost always do in a yoga practice is called savasana. Mm. And it lit literally translates to corpse pose. Mm. So in a way, it's like practicing our own death and letting go, because mm. death is the ultimate letting go. Just can we let go? And can you relax mm. in savasana? And for some people, it's the hardest pose. Mm. They just want to jump up and run and start doing things again. Yeah. You know, that their mind is so busy. But can you relax your mind, relax your body? And the two are very connected. So that when your body's relaxed, it is easier to relax your mind. And mm. if you've been focusing on your breath the whole time during your yoga practice, you will feel more centered because you haven't been thinking about all the other stuff that <laughs> driving you crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's like a whole really interesting system. And then it, you can come into the whole thing of what is yoga? Yeah, what is yoga? <laughs> you know, is it just mindfulness, mindful mm. action, being aware of your thoughts? Mm. You know, they say your thoughts become words and your words become actions and your actions become your life. So. And we oftentimes, you know, myself very much so, you think about all this negativity and don't realize like that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so yeah. I think it's been pretty proven that your thoughts have a physical effect on your life, whether it's just your mental health or your body's physical health. Like right. what you think is really important. And if yoga can help you to kind of calm down those anxious thoughts or whatever else is going on, that's great. I mean, exactly. it's also good exercise, but even just right. for your mind, that's really awesome. Right. And we just, you know, there's different types of yoga, different styles, mm. and some yoga can be more rigorous, vigorous, some is more relaxing, but I think we need to balance it because yoga is mm. also about balance. Mm. Like, how do we balance opposite actions, opposite energies, like the breath, the inhale and the exhale, there's a rising up, kind of an energizing mm. on the inhale, and then there's a relaxing, settling down, connecting to the earth on the exhale. And so in every yoga pose, like the asanas, the poses are really a way of bringing things up for you and, and noticing, like, are you impatient? Do you have a lot of negative self-talk? <laughs> you know, are you distracted? Are you just like thinking, I just want to get this done. But meanwhile, you're thinking about what you're going to eat after class. Yep. <laughs> you know? But if you can be fully present in the moment, mm. in this moment, then that's when your mind starts to relax. And you do have that sense of, at the end of a yoga class, it's really interesting how people will feel very relaxed, but also have energy. Hmm. But it's not that crazy kind of energy. Yeah. That just like, you know. It's not chaotic. It's yeah, just... it's like really getting your nervous system all wound up. It's more like, um, you know, I'm ready for whatever life presents kind of energy. And I have energy to do yeah. things. And I feel inspired. That's the kind of energy you want. <laughs> yeah. You know, people think it's all about flexibility. Hmm. Well, it's about balance. It's about building strength and flexibility and trying to um, have the two be more or less equal so one isn't overpowering the other mm. and also to have different muscle groups balanced so you know for example oftentimes our quads are really strong but the hamstrings are weak that's yeah. like really common so you know a good practice which takes some thought and takes some like kind of understanding of what's going on is to try and balance those mm. two energies um, but the more, and that's why it's nice to have a home practice too, because mm. you might discover something that um, in a yoga class that was brought up, and then you can practice on, you know, practice that at home. Yeah, yeah, and taking care of yourself in the way that you need to do, not just what the teacher has prepared for the day, which is kind of like learning English. You know, maybe you go to a class and the teacher says, hey, we're going to talk about this today, but you want to learn that and other things, you know, taking charge of your own education or exercise mm -hmm. is always going to be a recipe for success. How did you enjoy that conversation with Gail? Was it a little fast? Was it a little tricky? Did you understand everything? <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to the vocabulary lesson. You're going to see my husband Dan and I 
going back and explaining some vocabulary expressions that we used in that conversation. And you're going to see a short clip from the conversation with Gail so that you can remember, oh yeah, that's what she said. All right, let's go on to the vocabulary lesson. The first expression we're going to talk about today is vision. Vision. What does this literally mean? And then we're going to talk about it in the figurative sense. Well, it literally just means your sight. Yeah, to uh, see. <laughs> yes, my vision is seeing the room. Yeah, so do you have good vision, poor vision? Oh, so my <laughs> real vision is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the eye doctor and get glasses and contacts. Mm. Right, right now I'm wearing contacts mm. and they kind of hurt my eyes. Yeah, your prescription is pretty strong because you have poor vision. Yes, I have poor vision. So yes. it's a general way to describe sight. Mm -hmm. But if we want to talk about this in a figurative way, you can kind of imagine your mind or your heart seeing the future. It's kind of your plan or goal for the future. What is yes. your vision for the future? And you might even use this for English. I have a vision for my English studies. Mm. I'm gonna become a fluent English speaker. I'm gonna speak confidently and make a lot of friends around the world. That's yes. my vision. It's and kind I, of your dream. I think it is more emotional mm. than plan or goal because mm. essentially it's a plan or a goal but when you say it's a vision, you're mm. picturing yourself in mm. that moment, how you're going to feel. What's your vision for your English lessons? Are you envisioning, envisioning going to America and meeting all the new people, meeting Vanessa and speaking <laughs> perfect English? Whoa. That's your vision. Whoa. So you can tell there's a lot of emotion behind this, a lot of passion behind it. It's your vision. And that's pretty much how Gail used it in the conversation Yes. when she talked about her vision, and I think that you'll see that in the clip in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to watch it? I'm ready. All right, let's watch. Yeah, although, you know, everything kind of, it's a lot about your vision and being mindful and mm. exploring, and so so they kind of weave together in some ways. Can... It's a lot about your vision and being mindful. It's a lot about your vision and being mindful. The next expression is a casual expression, and it is to dabble in something. And this basically just means to try something, mm -hmm. but it means try something not seriously. <laughs> so I dabbled in baking, mm. and actually over you know over this last holiday I baked some waffles, mm. and it was uh, Belgian waffles, really sweet dessert waffles. And mm. I would say I just dabble in baking because I only make that every now and then. Yeah, you don't bake every week or mm -hmm. every day. Just. Every couple months you make these amazing Belgian waffles, mm -hmm. but it's just, you know, casually, not so seriously, every now and then. Mm -hmm. So you can use this for really any hobby that you do that's not so serious. So that's how Gail used it. She said that I dabbled in yoga. Mm -hmm. I did it occasionally, maybe once a month, maybe once every couple months, but it wasn't a big important part of her life. Yeah, and the, when, when I've heard this used, it's usually when somebody asks you if you oh. do something. Uh, and you just say, yeah, I dabble. Oh, so you don't want to show them I'm so serious about this. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to say, oh, it's not so serious. Oh, yeah, I, I dabbled in mm -hmm. art for a while. I dabbled in painting, but, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't anything serious. Right. So you're kind of being modest. You're not really saying, yes. I love this. <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Instead, it's a little more casual than that. So I hope that you'll be able to see that from the conversation with Gail. Let's watch it. I just dabbled in it. And one thing that I always remember, I think I just dabbled in it. And I just dabbled in it. And the next expression is to be mindful. 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 Your mind is your brain. So you can kind of imagine here that you are aware. You are intentional. You're not doing something by accident. You are intentional. You are doing it consciously. You are aware. You are mindful. Mm -hmm. And this is a word that's often linked with yoga because mm -hmm. you're not just doing, say, boxing where you're, you're punching. No, instead, you're thinking about each muscle. It's kind of slow and careful. So you're in your mind, you're thinking about each movement, you are mindful, you're careful and intentional yes. with each movement. And we can use that for other activities as well. So what about for you? How would you use mindful? Well, I think this has become a pretty popular thing in mm. modern society. Yeah. And actually, we have a whole extra term, which is mindfulness. Mm. 
So this is the art of being mindful,、mm -hmm. and I assume that probably you know a hundred years ago everybody was being mindful at some point because they had more time. <laughs> And they didn't have too many things to distract them. Yeah,、like、not、screens. as many distractions. <laughs> But now you have to say, "I practice mindfulness."、Mm. So that just means at some point in the day, I stop、mm. and I think about my body,、mm. my thoughts, my, what's my just、life. going on in my <laughs> in my mind. I'm not、mm. looking at my phone. I'm not、mm. watching a TV show. I'm being mindful. Yeah, I think that that's actually a really good New Year's resolution that a lot of people make.、Mm. Is I'm going to be mindful every day. It could just be okay. I'm gonna sit down for ten seconds, and just sit down and breathe and think about nothing, or think about, oh, what is my posture like? How do I feel today? Let the emotions hit you <laughs> right and left: anger, sorrow, <laughs> and really just joy. Being conscious about that, being mindful about it. Or we can use this same idea and talk about. A more concrete situation. So, for example, if you are a teacher. And you have a classroom. You have to be mindful of all of the students' behavior.、Mm. This means aware of their behavior. Just like I'm mindful of myself, I'm aware of my own thoughts and feelings. So you can be mindful of the students、mm -hmm. and kind of aware of that situation. What about the verb to mind? Yeah, just to mind something. How would you use that? I mean, it's basically the same thing. Be、mm -hmm. aware, but it's almost like be careful.、Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, mind the puddle. It's usually used as some kind of warning,、mm -hmm. like mind the puddle, and、mm -hmm. that might be、Don't、a little bit old English, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's not super common. I feel like there's a phrase where we definitely use it. Yeah. Mind your manners. <laughs> oh, that's right.、Of、I、course. know that parents say this all the time. If you're if you were a kid, and you're at the dinner table, and you just had your hands everywhere, and you're eating. Your parents would probably say, "Mind your manners."、Mm -hmm. This means be careful of your manners.、Yes. Don't put your hands all over the table. Be kind of more responsible and mature. Mind your manners. Yeah, and this is also definitely an old term,、mm. but it's carried over into modern popular culture. Yes. Have you ever visited London and seen this expression? Do you remember where this is in London? Mind the gap. Mind the gap. Yes. If you go <laughs> on the The subway, or the underground, or they call it the tube. <laughs> Everywhere, there's signs that say "mind the gap," and the gap is the space between the platform and the train.、Mm -hmm. Don't fall there;、yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous. So they're saying, "Watch out!、Just、Be remember, careful!" Look of the gap, but it's a really polite way to say "mind the gap." Be、mm -hmm. careful. So if you go to London, you might see that. Expression everywhere, and you might even hear the announcer say, "Mind the gap as you get on the train." <laughs> But would you say, "Be mindful of the gap"? You could. It makes sense. But Technically, it's, a, it's right, but it's, it's a little it's bit strong. Yeah, it's a little bit too strong.、It、Be mindful of, of is like really watch. You can work with this thing. You can't really work with a, a、mm. hole in the ground. You're just trying to miss it. Yeah, avoid the gap in the ground.、Mm. Just step over it. Yeah. So I feel like if you say, "Be mindful of something." It's more be thoughtful about it, think about it, and kind of more that inner feeling, like with yoga. All right, let's watch the clips、so、that you can see how it was used. But still, there's ways of like breathing more fully, breathing more mindfully, that can you know help your overall health.、Mm -hmm. There's ways of like breathing more fully, breathing more mindfully. There's ways of like breathing more fully, breathing more mindfully. The next expression is to clear your mind. And this is a pretty self-explanatory expression. It just means to forget, usually your problems.、Mm -hmm. Yes,、yeah. we can imagine you're erasing the problems,、mm. you're clearing the problems from your mind. Yeah, and it might not even just be problems. Maybe you're just doing a lot of things,、mm. and you're maybe there's a lot of noise around you. So、mm. you need to go outside. I would say usually it's going outside、mm. to clear your mind. Yes, I think this was something that happened to us a couple months ago over Christmas break.、Mm. We went to Dan's parents' house, and there were a lot of people there. And every day there was so much going on, especially when we we're running after our toddler. It was just so busy.、Mm -hmm. And every day we said, "Okay, we need to get outside to clear our minds." <laughs> so every day we went for a walk. We went to the、mm -hmm. park, and it was kind of necessary because in that 
busy environment, we're not really worried or you know, stressed. It's just a lot going mm -hmm. on. So it's nice to step outside and clear your mind. Yes, and I definitely would say though, it is mostly associated with stress. Mm. So if you're- It was in, a little bit stressful with lots of people in a was. toddler. <laughs> yes, so like if you're in an argument with somebody uh -huh. and you just need to walk away because you can't solve the problem now, mm. you might need to say, I just need to go and clear my mind and mm. then we'll come back to this problem. Mm, that's a very responsible thing to say. Go clear my mind and then we'll get back to this. And just to let you know a quick grammar about this, make sure that our possessive pronoun, clear my mind, clear his mind, make sure that it matches with the subject. Mm -hmm. You can't say, I need to clear his mind. No. I, his, it doesn't really work. You can only clear your mind. That sounds like a threat. <laughs> I need to clear his mind. <laughs> kind of like you're going to uh, erase his memory. <laughs> so instead, make sure that your subject matches that possessive pronoun. He needs to clear his mind. She needs to clear her mind. Mm -hmm. I need to clear my mind. Mm -hmm. All right, let's watch the clip. And then when you start to think about it, maybe it's just that physical element, but I kind of, it clears my mind a little bit. Like mm -hmm. when it clears my mind a little bit. Like mm -hmm. when it clears my mind a little bit. Like mm -hmm. when the next expression is one that I love. It's to be in the zone. We can kind of imagine here this this thing that Dan's doing with his hands in the zone. You're completely focused. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at other things. You're not distracted. You are so focused. You are in the zone. And we can kind of imagine that mental thing that's happening where your mind is blocking out other things, you mm. are in the zone. Yeah, you're not thinking about anything else. Mm, yes, and this, I mentioned this in the conversation with Gail, this happens to me in yoga class sometimes if I really concentrate on breathing. Mm. And then also my emotions, I'm thinking about my breathing, I'm thinking about my emotions. There's not space in my brain to think about other things, so I kind of forget what's for dinner and I forget mm -hmm. what else I was doing and I can just focus, I can be in the zone. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of a, a great place to be. You feel relaxed and you're blocking out other distractions as long as that's okay. Mm -hmm. So what about for you? When have you been in the zone? Yeah, I definitely use this term for sports. Mm. So when I play hockey, I get in the zone. Mm. I'm not thinking about anything else. Um, but I would also say for sports, mm. when we say in the zone, that also means you're playing very well. Oh, right. Like if you said he's in the zone, that means that he is scoring goals, mm. he's playing really well, he's not making many mistakes. Yeah, he's not distracted by other things, so he's doing mm -hmm. well. <laughs> you're in the zone. So yeah. I want to know for you, you can even use this when you're studying English. When you're studying English, are you so focused, you're so into it, your brain is tuning out mm. other things your brain is you're clearing your mind of other things and you're in the zone and studying english i want to yes. know if that has ever happened to you and maybe there's a lot going on in your house so it's not so possible yes have you been i think they call it a flow state as well oh sure your brain is just flowing mm -hmm. and you're just in the going flow. in the flow oh that's another great way to say this in the zone in the flow it means you're just going and going and going and mm -hmm. you're really uh on the ball. Oh, so many good expressions. On the ball, too. Yeah, you're on the ball. You're really just focused. <laughs> so I hope that all of these expressions in the zone, uh, on the ball. In the flow. In, uh, in the flow. I hope that all of those are useful to you to mean the similar thing of focused. All right, let's watch the clip. I almost feel like I'm in the zone. Or just like when you're thinking about your breath, you can. I almost feel like I'm in the zone. Or I almost feel like I'm in the zone. Or the next expression is religiously. Mm. And this just means to have full commitment to something. Yes. But um, almost in like a spiritual way. Mm. And I would say nine times out of 10, you're going to use this as a joke mm. or as hyperbole. Exaggeration. Yes, so mm. I eat pizza religiously. <laughs> it doesn't mean that three times a day you eat pizza. Doesn't that mean... would be literally religiously. Well, <laughs> it would also mean you go to the pizza and you worship the pizza. <laughs> It's not that. <laughs> no, you don't pray to pizza. No. You just love pizza so much and you eat it very often mm -hmm. and very regularly. Yeah, but it doesn't mean actually that you treat it like a religion. Mm -mm. So in this way, it's a hyperbole, which is a great way of saying an exaggeration. Yeah, and I mean, technically you could use this at, in a religious, a true religious sense, like mm. 
I go to church religiously. Oh, it actually is religion. It, yeah. But it means the same thing. You do it often. You're committed, and you treat it seriously. Or if you said I prayed at church religiously,、mm. like that doesn't really make sense because. It's a given. You're at church. Of course, of you're going to be doing、religious. it religiously. <laughs> right. So I want to know for you: Is there anything that you do religiously? I know I can think of one thing. Oh no, you can. <laughs> yes, drink coffee. <laughs> oh, that's true. I do drink coffee religiously. Yes,、mm. if Dan. I maybe do pray to it too. <laughs> Secretly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you don't have coffee in a day, I'm pretty surprised. Like you, it happens every day religiously. It's you're committed to it. It <laughs> happens every single day, and you can kind of see it's a little bit yeah, of a joke. Funny. It's funny because I'm committed to coffee. You're committed、I'm、to coffee. I'm following coffee. Yes. To my grave. Yes. <laughs> so I want to know for you, what is something that you do religiously? It can be a little bit of an exaggeration. That's fine, or something silly like coffee.、Yes. Do you drink coffee religiously? I would say. I drink tea, but I don't drink tea religiously. Like I don't drink tea absolutely every single day, and if I don't have it, there's a problem. <laughs> I, you don't do very many things religiously. Oh yeah. Yeah.、Mm. It's just chaos. <laughs> just chaos. I would say Clearly. that. Clearly. <laughs> I, especially with teaching English, there's a lot of things that I do religiously.、Mm. We I, hope you、uh, religiously watch Vanessa's videos. Oh, that means that you are committed. Pray to Vanessa. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. Worship it mean that. Vanessa. <laughs> it means that you are doing it consistently. That's and, what I do. <laughs> and、uh, I hope that it's something that's a part of your daily life. At least learning English is. All right, let's watch the clips so that you can see how it was used. And I did that class religiously for two years. Oh, that's dedication. And I did that class religiously for two years. And I did that class religiously for two years. The next expression is a great idiom to take a toll or to take its toll. Take its toll. Yes, both of these are the exact same thing. We had a long discussion about what's the difference between these two, and in the end, we came to the conclusion that they're exactly the same. Yes. So good news, you get two for one. <laughs> yeah. Do you know where it came from? The term. Ah,、uh, a toll. Do you know what a toll is? It's like、uh, when you're driving and you have to pay. Yes. To pass to another road, it's a toll. It's a road or a bridge、uh -huh. that you have to pay to cross.、Ah. So that's the original meaning. And、um, I was actually looking this up. In ancient times, sometimes the toll and on the road was a lot. Oh. It was a lot of money, or you had to give like your cattle or something. Oh, like, something really valuable. Yeah, people would really make the、oh. toll expensive to、oh. go across a bridge, because、oh. there's maybe there's only one bridge, and you're like, hey, cross this bridge, but give me your cow. Hmm. So in this sense, back in the day, it was quite expensive to pay the toll.、Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's like a dollar. Yeah,、maybe. there are roads and transport everywhere. Yeah, so you don't really have to pay that much nowadays.、Mm -hmm. But this meaning kind of seems to go back to that original meaning of toll to take、mm -hmm. a toll. It means that something has gradually, over time, weakened something. So、yes. let me give you a quick example. You might say that I drove my car sixty miles every day, and it took a toll on my car.、Mm -hmm. That means that. Driving my car sixty miles every day—that's、uh, like sixty kilometers, we could say. Sixty kilometers every day took a toll on my car. It's a lot of driving, so my、mm -hmm. car gradually weakened because of that. It took a toll.、Uh, what's another way that we could say take a toll or take its toll? Yeah, you often use this with just your body.、Mm -hmm. So maybe your job has taken. Its toll on you, or、mm. your job took a toll on your body.、Mm. So if you stand a lot, or you sit a lot,、mm. or maybe you're working with machinery,、mm. um, it can take a toll, and maybe you get injured just over time. Or you're 40 years old, and all of a sudden, oh my arm, I can barely move <laughs> this arm, right? Sure. Or in the most general sense, you can even just say life takes its toll. Oh, that's quite dark. <laughs> it is, well, yep. It's true.、Over、As time, time goes on, you just get older and weaker, and life is taking its toll. Yeah, that happens to everybody. It's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> so when you use this expression, it's implying that something is weakening over time. We could say, you know, my car is weakening over time,、mm -hmm. and we have kind of a cause and effect. Driving my car sixty miles. Took its toll on my car.、Mm -hmm. The cause is driving 60 miles, 
and it's affecting my car or maybe sitting down every day for eight hours at my office took its toll on my body we have this parenthood cause and effect oh is taking its toll <laughs> on my mental well-being <laughs> Uh, maybe that's, that's a little strong. <laughs> maybe that's just having a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there's something in your life that is over time. The first time it happens, maybe the second time or third time, it doesn't really affect you. But gradually over time, something has weakened you. Maybe that's yeah, physically or maybe that's mentally mm -hmm. or it could be something else in your life like your car it's taking its toll so i recommend checking out the lesson guide so you can get a couple more sample sentences for this this is an excellent idiom that we use in daily conversation so make sure that you're familiar with it all right let's watch the clip sitting and i had never uh, sat so much in my whole life it takes a toll on you <laughs> oh i i knew it was it takes a toll on you it takes a toll on you the next expression is an idiom down the road and this is not literally down a road. This just means down in the future. Mm -hmm. Or up in the in future. future. Yes, <laughs> sometime in the future. Yeah. Yes, and it doesn't mean tomorrow. Mm. It means in a later date, probably over a year, I'd say. Yeah, it's kind of vague. If you don't want to say exactly when something will happen, you might say, oh, I'd like to go to Japan down the road. Mm -hmm. Or someday down the road, I hope to be fluent in English. This just means in the future. We yes. can kind of imagine the road of life. And somewhere down the road of life, <laughs> you will go to Japan or you will be fluent yeah. in English. It's obviously very non-specific and mm. non-committal. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it will never happen. Yeah. So you don't want to use this if someone says, uh, hey, can you help me to clean the floor? <laughs> Oh, I'll do it down the road. Oh, no, that's not a good way to use Someday, this. Someday down the road, I'll clean the floor for you, honey. <laughs> that means maybe next year. <laughs> so we want to use this in situations where it's pretty far in the future or just some unknown time in the future. Maybe some kind of goals you have for your life or you have a vision for something that will happen in the future. And you mm. say, oh, down the road, I would like this to happen. Yes, and uh, Gail actually used it in a negative way. Mm. So she was saying negative thoughts can have implications down the road oh. or bad implications, which means this is like a unspoken mm. thing uh, that will happen. Yeah, so something will happen down the road if you have bad posture, if you don't exercise, something negative will happen down the road if you don't take care of yourself now. So this might be motivation for you to start exercising or eating healthy or making some kind of lifestyle change. Well, if I don't start eating more vegetables, I will be very unhealthy down the road. Mm -hmm. So I need to change something now in my life. You're kind of looking towards that unspecific time in the future down the road. This is a another lovely expression. We've got a lot of lovely expressions in this lesson. So I hope that you'll be able to use it yourself. Let's watch the clip so you can see how it was originally used. You think about all this negativity and don't realize like that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so right. that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so right. that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh. So how did you enjoy that vocabulary lesson? I hope that you learned a lot and you can include those into your daily vocabulary. Next, it's going to be time for the grammar lesson. This is phrasal verbs. You're going to be learning some important phrasal verbs, four to be exact, so that you can use these and integrate them into your daily conversation. Let's watch. The first phrasal verb that we're going to talk about is to tune in to something. And in the conversation with Gail, it kind of sounded like she said turn in, mm. but really the expression is to tune in to something. And this means to have an understanding of something, mm. maybe a deeper understanding of something. So you tune in to your thoughts. It mm. means you're thinking about your thoughts, tuning into your thoughts. How would you use this great phrasal verb to tune in? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is tuning in to a radio station. Oh, this is a good physical, literal yeah. way to use that. And this is a little more old school, but mm -hmm. people still say this today, mm -hmm. tuning in for a TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, tune in on Friday to see the brand new episode of... Dan's TV show. Dan's TV <laughs> show. Tune in Friday night. So you can tune in to the radio station which means that you can try to hear it more clearly. You're changing the stations, yes. you're hearing it more clearly, but this also works in a figurative way. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could 
tune in to your body. Mm -hmm. This means that you're thinking about the different muscles. How does my back feel right now? How do my feet feel? You're tuning in to this specific understanding. Yes, and I think perhaps the origin of this mm. comes from tuning in music. Oh. So if you're tuning in, you're, everybody's trying to get on the same page and sound the same. Yes, so you're tuning your instrument, you're mm -hmm. making your instruments all Changing sound the strings, similar. Yes. Yeah, so you could even say this as uh, a teacher, I need to tune in to the needs of mm. my students. Yes. I need to tune in to the needs there of needs my students. There needs to be harmony. Mm, I Everything need to have needs a deeper to be together. understanding of mm -hmm. the needs of my students. So let's go ahead and watch the clip where you heard tune in. It kind of sounds like turn in, but try to hear tune in and then we're going to talk about a little bonus expression which sounds like the opposite all right let's watch the clip mm -hmm. it really relaxes you so when you turn into your breath it's kind of the same thing mm -hmm. it really relaxes you so when you turn into your breath it's kind of the same thing. The next phrasal verb that we're talking about is kind of a bonus one. It wasn't in the conversation with Gail, but because we talked about to tune in, I thought we'd talk about, what's the opposite? Tune out. To tune out. La 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 la. Yep, it means that you're ignoring something that somebody mm. says. You are not gaining a deeper understanding. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. You're closing your ears, tuning out. Mm. So if Maybe you know someone who talks a lot, or maybe they talk about something that you just don't want to hear. You can tune them out. Yes, I tuned her out. <laughs> yes, when she was talking Not too her, much. Not her, somebody else. <laughs> I just tuned her out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's someone particularly that I'm thinking of at Christmas uh, this past <laughs> year. Uh, Dan has a family member who talks all the time. Quite a lot. 24-7 about everything. Everything in the world, every pastry she's ever baked, every friend she's ever had who's broken a, a hip or an ankle. Oh, and it's just nonstop. So after a little bit of time, I just had to tune her out. Yeah, you have to. I couldn't listen carefully to every single word. Yes. It's too much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to do this to family members. <laughs> yeah, you have <laughs> to tune them out. So, but this is definitely considered to be rude. Yeah, like, you don't want to show that you you're tuning them out. You don't want to tell people, I'm tuning you out. If you say that to somebody, <laughs> That means I am ignoring you. I'm not listening to you. I'm trying to pretend you're not even here. Yeah. It's, it's very strong if you're tuning somebody out. Yeah. Or alternatively, you can tune something else out. Uh -huh. So a lot of times in modern times, we say this for um, maybe the news mm -hmm. or maybe Twitter. You got to tune out Twitter. I don't even know why you'd be on Twitter. I don't have Twitter because it just annoys me. So... <laughs> Sure, yeah, if you're tuning out the news, the news you're mm -hmm. just talking heads, just talking about mm -hmm. all the problems in the world, all the stuff, oh, there's all this, all these bad things going on, mm -hmm. I can't take it. No, you just have to tune it out and mm -hmm. focus on the good things in life. Yes, and you'll notice that oftentimes we split this phrasal verb. In the lesson guide, I specify if you can split a phrasal verb and then how to do it, but I'll just mention this briefly here. We often split tune her out, tune it out if mm. you're talking about the news this is often done so make sure you check out the lesson guide for some more samples the next expression the great phrasal verb is to wind up <coughs> there are two <coughs> different meanings for this the first one well this is a literal sense is to twist something mm. you're winding up the clock you're making it tight you're making it tight yeah. so this also links to the figurative sense <coughs> What is that figurative sense? If you say, oh, I, I was so wound up after work. Yeah, it means that you are stressed out. Usually mm. we mean this in a stressed out way. Yeah. But it could also be excited. Mm-hmm. I'm all wound up for the concert. But, you know, I'd usually say it's probably associated with stress nowadays. Yes, yes. And why are we using wound instead of wind here? We're using the past tense. Mm. Because we only use wound, I am wound up, when we're talking about that figurative sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, I feel so wound up, like a clock, like a rope. I'm so tight. I feel yeah. uncomfortable. It's how you feel now, and it's mm -hmm. something that happened in the past yeah. to make you feel this way. Yeah, so I am wound up. Mm -hmm. But if you say uh, the second meaning of this phrasal verb, mm. I was driving down the road and I was following my directions. I don't know how, how did I wind up here? 
Wow. What does this mean? The second meaning. This means you end or conclude somewhere.、Mm, surprising. Oh, I I thought I was following my directions, but then I ended up here. And that's another phrasal verb.、Mm-hmm. Ended up means wind up. How did I wind up here? How、yes. did I end up here? I thought I was following my directions.、Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a surprising place that you go. Yeah, it's you. You weren't planning on、mm-hmm. something happening. If you wind up somewhere,、mm-hmm. um, for example, maybe you go to college、mm-hmm. and you are taking biology, like Dan. <laughs> This happened to me. Well, I started out in biology, but I wound up、mm-hmm. studying business.、Mm-hmm. So when you use it in the past tense for this meaning of surprisingly going somewhere,、mm-hmm. you can use it in the present. I, how did I wind up here? Or we could say it in the past. I wound up、mm-hmm. here. We need to use both of those when we're using this specific meaning. So Dan wound up as a business major. How did it happen? How did I get here? Yeah. Whoa, this is a little bit surprising. I went to college and I wound up with Vanessa. Wow, how did that happen? <laughs> so it's some kind of surprising conclusion. So make sure that you check out the lesson guide so that you can get both of these meanings and make sure that you get the grammar correct. And、yeah. should not be, not like. Get too wound up in self-criticism,、mm. you know, because you realize, like, well, I'm not very strong, or, and、yeah. to not be, not like, get too wound up in self-criticism,、mm. you know, because you realize, like, well, I'm not very strong. The last phrasal verb that we're going to talk about today in detail in this grammar lesson is to bring up something. Yes, we want to bring up the term. Bring up. Yes, and that is the first way that we are going to bring it up, <laughs> and that is to just introduce something in conversation.、Mm-hmm. For example, in the U.S., we rarely bring up religion、mm-hmm. in conversation. This means we rarely talk about the topic of religion spontaneously、yes. with maybe people we don't know that well. It gets personal,、mm-hmm. right? And yeah, so bringing up is definitely the first introduction,、yes. right? And sometimes if you say, all of a sudden he brought up. Politics,、oh. or he brought up religion.、Ooh. It means it's it's suddenly.、Mm-hmm. So it often means it's a sudden thing. Yes, it's entering into conversation. So there are two main ways they have the same meaning, but there are two main things that are often brought up. One is topics.、Mm-hmm. It is spontaneously entered into conversation. Or what if you look at a picture of your childhood and you see your brothers there, you see your friends from across the street are there,、mm-hmm. and you're playing with your favorite soccer ball.、Mm, mm, it per- kind of Brings up some、yeah. warm feelings inside of you. Perhaps it it brings up some nostalgia. Oh, nostalgia! That that nostalgia. warm feeling from your past. So it's bringing up some feelings inside of you. It is arising. It's not、mm-hmm. coming up in conversation, but it's just coming up within you. Yeah, it could just be internal the、mm-hmm. feelings, the emotions. Yeah. So when you think back on our time, let's say our time when we first were married and we lived in Pennsylvania. Hmm. What does that bring up within you? What feelings does it bring up? <laughs> yes, it brings up a sense of、uh, it's good memories, I'd、mm-hmm. say. But overall, I'm glad we're not there.、Mm. Mostly because we lived in a very cold house. <laughs> There was no heat in Pennsylvania, and we were very, very poor <laughs> and very busy. All living off of a Starbucks salary. <laughs> we were really busy. I think we had four jobs, and. No heat in our house, so when I think about our first year married, it brings up a lot of mixed feelings.、Mm, it was a special、emotions. time because we were first married,、mm-hmm. but also we were really busy, so it was quite difficult.、Mm-hmm. It brought up some mixed feelings inside of、mm-hmm. me, or maybe when you're thinking back on a difficult time, oh, it brought up some sad feelings, or it、mm-hmm. brought up some. Excitement from my past. It brought up some warm memories. Yes, and going back to the first memory or first、uh, meaning, you、mm-hmm. can also split the the phrasal verb、mm-hmm. up. So you could say bring it up,、oh, or bring bringing a topic like up. up, right?、Mm-hmm. So、um, a lot of times, if people are having an argument, they <sighs> might say, "Why did you bring it up?"、Oh, or "Why did you bring that up?" Something from the past.、Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not a good idea to bring up stuff from the past.、Mm-hmm. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up now.、Yeah. Someone might say that in an argument. Don't bring it up now.、Right. Don't talk about that, that now. And that would mean don't talk about it. Don't、mm. speak of it. Yes, yes. So there are there is one main meaning to arise with bring up, but it could be topics in conversation or it could be feelings within yourself.、Mm-hmm. So let's watch the clip so that you can see how it was used. You might discover something that.、Um, In a yoga class that was brought up, and then you can you might discover something that、um, in a yoga class that was brought up, and then you can. 
Were those phrasal verbs new to you? I hope that you learned something new about using them in your life. All right, now we're gonna go on to the pronunciation lesson. This is where we take an in-depth look at some of the vocabulary expression sentences and try to say them as naturally as possible. I want you to try to repeat after me, speak out loud, and try to really follow my prompts so that you can speak naturally. Let's go. What we're gonna be doing is breaking down each sentence. I'll show you the clip from the conversation. We'll break it down in detail. You'll have a chance to repeat with me. Please be active during this lesson. Please repeat with me. Try to speak out loud as much as you can. And then when I pause, make sure that you fill in the blanks. I'll be giving you some instructions so that you can follow along. Then we'll watch the clip again so that you can hear every little thing that we talked about. I'm sure that this will be useful to you now as you improve and also as you go into the real world and have real conversations. All right, let's get started with the first clip. We're gonna listen to the first sentence from the conversation with Gail. Yeah, although, you know, everything kind of, it's a lot about your vision and being mindful and mm. exploring, and so so they kind of weave together in some ways. Can, it's a lot about your vision and being mindful, and it's a lot about your vision and being mindful. And Did you hear the vocabulary word vision? Vision, we're gonna be talking about this word and also the rest of this short sentence. It's a lot about your vision. It's a lot about your vision. It's a lot about your vision. Let's start at the beginning. Can you say with me? It's, it's. Then we're going on to this next word, but it's actually two words together. A lot, a lot. Do you hear a lot? Really, this is something that's reoccurring in American English that that final T is stopped. Your tongue is at the top of your mouth. You're going to make that T sound, but you don't. Instead, it just gets cut short. Your tongue stops at the top of your mouth. So can you say that with me? A lot. Is your tongue on the top of your mouth? I hope so. A lot. A lot. Don't let air pass through. Don't say a lot. Instead, just let it stop there. A lot. Let's put those two words together. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, let's go on to the next word. The next word is about. About. Do you hear something similar happening here? That final T gets cut short. Your tongue is at the top of your mouth, but there's no air going through. Say it with me. About. About. Let's say the full sentence up to this point. It's a lot about. It's a lot about. And the next word is your, but. Those two vowels in the middle, O-U. Instead, they change and become E. Your. Your. This happens when native speakers are talking quickly, so I want you to be able to imitate this and use it yourself. Your. 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 Can you say that with me? Your. Let's go and say the full sentence to this point. It's a lot about your. It's a lot about your. It's a lot about your. And the final word is our key word here, vision vision. There's a lot of vibrations that are happening in this word. First, with the letter V, v there should be some vibrations here happening with your lips. V and then for the next part, we have v -z -z. Can you make that sound with me? Z -z. -z. And then that final sound is in, in, just like I'm in my house, in, v -z -z. Vision, vision. Those vowels are the same. They're both short eyes. Vision, 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 vision. Can you say that with me? Vision. What's your vision? Vision. Let's go back and try to say this full sentence all together, and then I'm going to pause so that you can say it by yourself. Ready? It's a lot about your vision. 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 All right, I'm gonna pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Go ahead. Great work. All right, let's listen to the clip so that you can hear Gail say this sentence. It's a lot about your vision and being mindful. And it's a lot about your vision and it's a lot about your vision and... The second sentence that we're gonna practice shadowing features the expression, it takes a toll. 
it takes a toll. If you've already studied the vocabulary expression, you understand what this means. Let's watch the clip where I said this and then we're going to repeat it together. And I had never uh, sat so much in my whole life. It takes a toll on you. Oh, I, I knew it was. It takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. I said it takes a toll on you. I said this quite quickly in the conversation. It takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. So let's practice this together. The first two words together have something unique happening, but we've already talked about this, so I hope that it will just refresh your memory. It takes. The word it, that final T, the same thing is gonna happen. What we talked about, the T stopping short on the top of your mouth. It, it, we didn't say it, but the tricky thing here is the next word starts with a T. So it kind of sounds like one word. It takes, it takes. Just imagine putting a short I before the word takes. It takes, it takes. You don't need to say it takes. <laughs> we don't need two T's. Instead, there's just one T and these words are linked together. This is gonna help you speak quicker and link those naturally. It takes, it takes. Can you say that with me? It takes. It takes, it takes. In the final part of the sentence, we have three different O sounds. So we're gonna practice that together. Get your lips ready. We're gonna practice these three different O's. They are, it takes a toll on you. Let's start with that first word. Toll, toll, toll. Can you make your lips look like mine? If you have a little mirror, try to look at your lips in that mirror so that you can see if they're imitating me. Toll. Toll. And then the next one is a little bit longer. On. Toll. On. Toll. On. And the final one, we're going to kind of pucker our lips a little bit like a kiss. You. <laughs> you. Toll. On. You. Toll. On. You. So it's starting small, then tall, and then puckered together. Toll. On. You. Can you say that with me? Toll on you. Make sure that you kind of exaggerate your mouth like I'm doing. Then we're going to say it faster and it's going to be a little bit less exaggerated. You're not going to see in the conversation my lips saying toll on you. It's not going to be quite so clear. But when we say it, we're going to be using that same pronunciation, just a little bit subtler. So let's go and say it together. Toll on you. Toll on you. Toll on you. Can you say that with me? Toll on you. Toll on you. Let's say it faster. Toll on you, toll on you, toll on you. All right, let's piece this sentence all together. It takes a toll on you. 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 Are you saying that with me? Say it with me. It takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. All right, I'm gonna pause and it's your turn. Go ahead. Excellent. I hope that this practice doesn't take a toll on you. I hope that it's helpful to you instead. Let's watch the clip. It takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. The next sentence that we're going to practice includes the vocabulary expression down the road. Down the road. Let's listen to that clip. You think about all this negativity and don't realize like that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so right. that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so right. that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh, so right. Gail says that has a lot of implications down the road. That has a lot of implications down the road. Let's break down the sentence starting with the beginning. The first word is that. Do you notice that final T here? I hope that you do. I hope that you can say this now naturally with me, your tongue at the top of your mouth, stopping that, that. That, are you saying it with me? That has a lot, has a lot, has, here we have a Z sound, has a lot. Oh, we have another T that's cut out, same word as before, has a lot. That has a lot, that has a lot, that has a lot. Can you say that with me quickly? That has a lot, that has a lot, that has a lot. Next, let's try to tackle this beautiful word, implications. Let's break it down. Try to say it with me as I say it. Implications. Implications. There needs to be a short I in the middle here. Impli, that's the short I. Impli, 
implications. 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 Let's say the full sentence up to this point. That has a lot of implications. That has a lot of implications. Say it with me. That has a lot of implications. That has a lot of implications. Are your mouth muscles warmed up? I hope so. Let's go to the final part. Our key expression down the road has one special element we're going to focus on. It's the final letter, road. Something happens with that D sound that we've already talked about with the T. It isn't really pronounced. Your mouth is in the position to say it, but there's really no air that comes out. So let's practice saying road. Not road, but road. Your tongue is there in place, about to make the D sound, but there's no vibration and air that comes out. Let's say that expression, down the road, down the road, down the road, down the road. Of course, you can say down the road. It's fine to add the D, but here in the conversation, we didn't add it, so I want to make sure that you can really imitate exactly the way that we're pronouncing, because once you learn to break down sentences like this, you can also do it on your own. You can listen carefully to a short clip, like one sentence, like we're doing now, and practice this yourself. If you hear something in the conversation and you wonder, why could I not understand that, you can break it down piece by piece like this. I hope I'm giving you some general tools to help practice your pronunciation yourself. So let's say this full sentence together. Don't forget the word implications. Don't forget cutting off T's and then that final word road. That has a lot of implications down the road. Make sure that your flow is natural. Follow my hands. That has a lot of implications down the road. Like a wave. That has a lot of implications down the road. That has a lot of implications down the road. Can you say that with me? That has a lot of implications down the road. That has a lot of implications down the road. All right, I'm going to pause and I want you to say this wonderful sentence yourself. Go ahead. Great work. All right, let's watch the clip again. That has a lot of implications down the road. Oh. So that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh. So that has a lot of implications down the road. Oh. Are your pronunciation muscles warmed up? I hope so. Along with the conversation, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation lessons in the Fearless Fluency Club, you'll also get access to the MP3 versions of all of these lessons and full PDF transcripts so that you can follow along with each word because I know there are a lot of new things that you can learn with really every sentence. You'll also be able to study with a story. Let's take a look at that really quick. The story is a fun one-page combination of all of the things that you learned this month. You'll see the vocabulary expressions, the phrasal verbs, the idioms, everything that you've learned is combined into this short story that you can repeat and listen to and say out loud and even memorize if you want. I also host live lessons in our private Facebook group so that we can interact with this material every week and also so that you can meet each other. A lot of members like to talk together and I think it's a good way to increase and improve your vocabulary and just improve your speaking skills. So now I have a question for you. Have you ever done yoga before? If you joined the Fearless Fluency Club in the month of April, which is this month, April 2019, you'll also see a short clip of Gail teaching me some yoga poses. It's kind of embarrassing because I usually don't do this for my English lessons, but it was fun and it was a good chance for you to be able to see Gail's teaching style. But I want to know, have you ever done yoga? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you again next Friday here on my YouTube channel for another video. Thanks so much for learning English with me. Bye! The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.